review of derivative. And um, here is the statement that I gave you. And I went, again, yeah, you guys were close. Some of you remembered some of the key words that we have here. The derivative is a measure of slope, but it's the measure of the slope of a line. And the line is a very special line. The line is one that is uh, tangent to a curve at a point. So derivative is the measure of slope, and it is the slope of a line, the measure of a slope of a line. A very special line, though, a tangent line, tangent to what? Well, to a curve, to the function graph, at a specific point. OK. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of pick up. This was the problem that we worked on. And as you recall, it took us forever. I hope you go back and review that. Because a problem like that can take up, I, I could give you one of these. And for some of you, it might take you all 45 minutes of the test time. Um, to do this, you only have maybe another half an hour to do one, you just do five more problems. So I, I will try not to, Angie asked me not to put one of these on the, the test, but please go back and review that. And remember that when you review this, you're going to only look at that much of the problem. You're not going to look at the way that I have, uh, that we developed the answer. And also remember that when I give you a problem like that, I always tag on a part B. And the part B says, show me what you understand by your drawing a picture, a graph of this. And so uh, just keep that in mind. We're going to do more of that today. So if you're not quite sure where I'm going on that, we'll have a chance to see it. OK. Again, some of you have come in with a lot of um, background work in derivatives. And you know all kinds of uh, shortcuts to work on. I don't want you to forget those. I want you to hang on to them. That's where section 2.2 picks up, is all those shortcuts. But we have to know why those shortcuts work and what happens. And that's what we do with the limit process. Now, on the, uh, the test, because that will be the first opportunity for me to assess you on section 3.1. Um, on the test, if you give me an answer and you show that you used correctly use one of those rules that you've known, and that's all the work you show me, I will give you one point credit, but you won't get all the other points for the problem. Okay? And you don't want to miss out on nine other points or whatever I deem that problem to be. So don't lose that information. You know, it's still good information, but we need to know more. Okay, so it says use the limit definition and uh, to find the equation of the tangent line. So here we go. Our work, when it asks us to do this, our work, the first thing we're going to do is to put down. Like I remember, have, we, have I shown you this notation, f prime? OK. f prime of x. And when you, we have that prime mark up here, the next thing you really should put down, just to remind you of what it is, when you find an answer, when you have an output to this function, you have found the slope of a tangent. How do we use the limit definition? Well, we start by saying the limit as delta x approaches 0. Delta x is our input then in this limit problem. It doesn't look like a, a true limit or a true input, but that's what it is. And we're going to, we, we, you need to write this down so that you will always remember and not have to panic, not give me one of those question marks. I wonder if that's the answer or not. But actually, you'll know with confidence. This is the limit definition. We're going to break it down a little bit once again. Again, delta x. What does it mean? Yeah, change in input values. OK. The change in input values, as we have one, one point in mind, as we're looking at one point, we're trying to find the derivative at that point, we consider what happens if I have a point some, a little ways away from the given point. And as the distance between my point and the other point shrinks to 0, goes to 0, the difference moves to 0, I want to know what happens to this. <coughs> this is nothing more than what? Slope. The difference in the outputs is the numerator divided by the difference in the, uh, of the inputs in the denominator. So this is what we need to do. And I, I want you to you know, write that down every time. If you do, I guarantee you're going to know how to do these problems on the test. OK, so let's begin our specific problem. Um, I'm going to leave this, um, this value here. There's a couple ways we could work this problem. 
And um, let me make sure that I've got. Um, Let's see, do I even have that problem in my notes here? If not, we're just, we're all going to be working on a problem that I don't even have in my notes. Good. This will give us all a chance to think about it. Um, so I, I want the, uh, the derivative of this, so I start with the limit as delta x approaches 0. Again, I was saying there's two ways to approach this. I'm going to give you the general way, and then we're going to take care of this at 4, at the point 4, 3. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, so um, here's my fraction line. Uh, we've got the delta x down there. Nothing's going to change with that. In the numerator, we know what f of x is, don't we? We're given that value. So I'm going to put minus, and I'm going to put parentheses. The reason I'm putting parentheses is, is if I forget the parentheses, I'm going to forget that I'm subtracting this whole quantity, and you know that's going to affect the sign between the square root of x and y. So I need to make sure I put parentheses there. Now we go back and we say, well, what do I do with f of x plus delta x? Remember, this is just the input value. And I'm going to put into this function, everywhere I see the input variable, I'm going to put in whatever I have here. So that means I'm going to have the square root of x plus delta x plus 1. So the first step is just knowing what to do. You know, how do you interpret f of x plus delta x? Okay. We want to work this problem down to the point where we can do what? Use direct substitution. Very good. Okay. And right now I can't use direct substitution. It would make my denominator 0. So the next thing we have to realize is, which part of this fraction am I going to work on? The numerator or the denominator? Now, it's kind of obvious for this one because there's nothing else in the denominator except the, uh, the delta x. But on some problems, it could be a little bit of a question. Which one do I work on? And again, start with the numerator. That's where we want. And what we want to do, remember where we're headed on this, what we want to do is we want to um, change the looks of this fraction so that I end up with a factor of delta x. If I had this whole thing multiplied by delta x, I could cancel the delta x's. If I had a factor of delta x up here. So I'm going to do my best to get this down to where I have a factor of delta x, and then I can cancel with this factor, and the problem is gone. The problem, isn't it, is that we have this down here. Now, this came up on the last quiz, and some of you, I believe it was your quiz, I had to write you a little note on some of yours and ask some questions. So if we're going to do this work here, I've got to multiply this fraction with another fraction. What do I choose? How do I know what to work with on the other fraction? And there's a name for it. We're going to, yeah, we're going to use the conjugate because we want to rationalize the denom or excuse me, the numerator. Okay, rationalize. In other words, we're going to make the numerator a rational value by it's good. We're going to virtually erase or, or rewrite all of those uh, square roots, and they won't be there anymore. So you said use the conjugate. Now, to use the conjugate means to do what? Okay, and i got lots of signs in here, so we have to be a little more careful. Do I want to switch to this one, this one, this one, or this one? Yeah between the two terms, okay? If you think of these as two binomials, and I use the conjugate of, of those, I have a plus b, for instance, and a minus b, and so the a is the first radical and the b is the one, and then, um, well, actually, no, I said that wrong. We could have had that, but that's not the problem. The a is everything in the first set of parentheses. Everything over here. b is everything over here. So to use the conjugate, I need to use the square root of x plus delta x <coughs> plus 1. I'm going to extend that to make sure it covers that. Um, 
plus the square root of, whoops, x. Let me make sure I get this all in here like it's supposed to. So let me do some cosmetic stuff. Plus the square root of x plus 1. That's a 1 over there. What's in the denominator of this? Because we're going to multiply it by a factor of 1, yeah, it has to be the same thing. Okay. Some of you on um, a problem similar to this, uh, I wrote you a little note and I said um, two-thirds. Is that the same thing as two-thirds squared? Now, the last one on the last quiz didn't need the conjugate. We just needed to take care of the, um, well, actually, it did need the conjugate. And uh, what we ended up doing, people tried to just square that whole thing. These, this is not correct here. And so we can't just square those. Uh, we've got to make sure that we have a quantity here and a quantity here, and then we match those up, but we just change the sign in between. Okay. Um, let's continue on then with our work. Um, equals, oh, let's see. If I take this term times this term, Let me think about. Man alive, what did I give you guys? Let's see here. Maybe that's why I don't have my notes. Because all of a sudden I'm looking at this. Do you see what I'm seeing? Yes. What are you seeing? I'll tell you this what I'm seeing. Um, no, it's down here. I'm going to stop the timer and uh, start the, time, the recording again. What we need to do, Stephanie, you're, you're the person of the hour here. So if we remove the parentheses here, oh, rats, is that going to work after all? Oh, yeah, it gets its plus here, isn't it? If I have a plus one and I distribute that, that's a negative one. Do you see where she's going on this? Okay, so that ends up with just the square root of x plus delta x minus the square root of x. Okay, what we're doing is if we remove the parentheses from this one, in fact from the whole numerator, who asked me that? Okay, if you remove the parentheses from this whole thing, this becomes negative the square root minus 1, mm -hmm. and then I've got 1 minus 1, okay, which makes it a whole lot easier. You know, we would have gotten our way into that one eventually, but man, I didn't want to go down that road. Okay, one of these rationalizations is plenty for all of us, so I'm going to write this now. If I had more room over there, I wouldn't be writing it out one more time like this, but uh, it bears repeating. Now you said use the conjugate. We're going to do that. And now plus the square root of x, okay. <coughs> okay. Limit. Delta x goes to 0. Now if we look at these, these are much cleaner binomials up here. Multiply the first terms. Connor, what do we get when we multiply the first terms? Delta x, yep. And uh, when I do FOIL, I would normally do you know outside, inside, but those are going to cancel. And then we end up doing the last terms, and the last terms are not, it's just simply x. Okay. Now take a look at your denominator, though. We're going to have um, we're going to have Delta x times the quantity x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Okay. As I've watched many students turn in papers on stuff like this, my timer? Thank you. I shouldn't say timer, recording. I didn't stop it.